Hi, I'm Mara Webster with In Creative Company and so thrilled today to be talking about the movie West Side Story with hair department head Kay Georgiou and makeup department head Judy Chin. Um, and I wanted to start by asking the both of you about what your initial process is when you first got the script for this movie, kind of how you first start going through and creating a breakdown for yourself in terms of figuring out, you know, what are the different looks that I'm going to need to build out for each character on the journey that they're going through? What's kind of the overall aesthetic with the film? You know, what what that initial first part of the process is for both of you in, in starting to come up with some of your ideas for looks for the movie. Judy, do you want to go first? Oh, my phone might die. <laughs> well, <clears throat> when first approached with the idea you of know, doing West Side Story, remaking it, um, you know, we have pretty big shoes to fill. Um, the, the original film is so beloved and so iconic. Um, still, that you know, felt like, how do we do this justice? But um, so I'm, I'm really glad that we stayed very close to the original story and the whole vibe and the whole feel of it. But um, my hope was to make it feel really real um, and timeless. And, you know, for generations from the past and from now and from the future that they will be able to connect to these characters and the story and just how beautiful it is um no matter when people might see it so that was that was my hope yeah and what about for uk um well judy's absolutely right when they when we were first told that they were going to be making West Side Story. It's absolutely right. It's enormous shoes to fill. So it was a bit intimidating. And uh, one of the first things that I looked at, and, and one of the first things that Stephen told us was, you know, it's set in 1957. And when they made the first film, it was just a fraction later. It came out in 1961. I'm not sure when they started filming it. So, um, the first thing that I did was uh, start looking at all of the period research and what uh, people looked like in New York at that time and figuring out, f for me, the, being in, in the hair department, figuring out whose hair I could use and who would have to wear wigs or pieces so that I could make them look as though they were in 1957 because um, as you well know today a lot of particularly ladies have long straight hair which was not fashionable back then so that's really where I started um, you know just looking at the period and I we didn't have many of the cast in when I very first came on board so it was really just looking to see what people would look like in 1957. And then as the cast, as the parts slowly started being cast, it would be, you know, fi finding the way to make that work for them. Yeah. And, and Kay, what were some of the specific hairstyles that you ended up creating using wigs to make sure that it did have that time period specific detail that you were mentioning there? Um, large, largely it was the ladies that, not Maria, that was her own hair. Um, because what I was requested to do for her, what, what Stephen wanted was something very, very natural. Um, as with Judy, you know, it just sort of like a timeless beauty. He didn't want anything particularly structured or um, manicured. Um, so that took me to Anita, who is a little bit more, let's say, world, world-wise, that right world wise world weary you know like she has a bit more experience so that um i gave her something that was more period correct but hoping you know it would still have some natural movement and stuff because she was you know they're dancing everybody's dancing in it and there were just various variations of different styles that were from 19 the late 50s that I did on the majority of the ensemble, the female ensemble, both the, the Sharks and the Jets. 
Yeah. And because Kay was mentioning some of the aesthetic and look for Maria, Judy, I wanted to talk to you about the look that you came up with for Maria in terms of makeup as well, because even I love the detailing of like the shade of lipstick that she uses in that scene where she puts the lipstick on and then rushes, rushes it off her face and then puts it back on again before going out to the dance um, and was really interested in, in how you came up with, you know, what's the perfect shade that's going to capture that moment in the story, but also the overall look and aesthetic for her as a character. She goes on this transformative journey of discovering who she is more. Um, well, Maria, for me, and I think for everyone, is just a beautiful soul and a natural beauty. Um, in order to just to make, I mean, Rachel's beautiful, <laughs> just stunning. Um, but, you know, in order to make her this look for me, it, I, you know, I just wanted to take all of her features and all of her coloring and all of her, the different beautiful attributes she had and enhance them all you know in a very natural way um you know everything that she has in her the arch of her brows you know her the shape of her eyes the you know the the coloring in her face and her cheekbones i just sort of enhanced them all slightly so everything about her, her beauty is somewhat high um for the lips you know i it was just this gorgeous red lipstick and you know, it matched the little red belt on her dress. And it was just something classic and of the period that was perfect. Yeah. And for both of you, there's so many individual looks that you're creating, but then there's also kind of collective linearity amongst characters. So you've got all of the characters who are jets and all of the characters who are sharks, and they've all got their unique look as a character and identity. And yet there's things that kind of subtly tie them together. So I was interested in how you looked not only at creating individual character looks, but where you wanted to have those subtle details that would tie characters together through their relationships on screen. Judy, do you want to go first? <laughs> I'm just worried for your phone. <laughs> um, well, I think I mean for the for the boy jets, you know, they're they're a scrappy bunch, you know, and um, so there was an element to all of them where they, for the most part, wore very very little makeup, and the things that made them into those characters, that gang, was you know little bits of actually like distressing them a bit, but like. You know they're also cute and also amazing. Um, you know, but for them, like, there was always a bit of grunge about all of them. Even when they were cleaned up, there was something distressed about them um, in their look. Um, but I, I, there, there's a way to achieve that with keeping them looking handsome and kind of tough looking. Um, and, and the same with the sharks in their own way. Um, that, that was that was my that was my approach for sort of tying them together and making them look like they were part of a gang, but at the same time really real and really raw. And we we kind of did something very similar for both the sharks and the jets um, with the with the male ensemble. We um, we decided after having the conversations about them that because they were always slightly broken down, as, as Judy said, they were, you know, we we broke them down. I mean, they all came in looking like they just had a shower. And, you know, those boys in 1957, they were street, you know, they were on the streets most of the time. So both of us tried to, to get rid of that slightly. Of course, we gave them period haircuts but I, I tried not to do any of them that so they looked freshly cut so that they all looked like they'd just been to the barbers two or three days ago or even last week. You know, they 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 didn't they're not supposed to have a lot of money. These these kids, you know, they spend most of their time working out how they're going to smack each other, you know, and, and get yeah, their own cigarettes off. picking up cigarettes off the street and smoking them <laughs> absolutely and it, i don't know if they if it showed because i haven't seen the film yet but you know we did a lot of testing and a lot of them had like cigarettes stuffed behind their ears that they'd half smoked so it was all about breaking them down and i, I know judy you gave tattoos to some of them right yeah um uh 
Mike Feist showed me one day on his sneaker a, uh, a little drawing he did of sort of like a very stylized, it's not a logo, but like a stylized version of a jet. And it was a very simple line drawing and I just thought it was brilliant. And anyway, we turned those into tattoo transfers and a few of them had these jets on them. And then we also had a few um, like period tattoos made up uh, for certain members of the Jets, and uh, th those were really fun. Um, yeah, I mean, it was just really a great thing to be able to take a real period look, you know, from our research from over the years, all the, all the great photographs that we were able to pour over and just deconstruct them. You know, it's like just make them and then break it down. That was really fun. And that, I think, is the thing that brought brought them together as a gang. You know, the individuality that they had is because they are all individual people. So they've they've all got their own look. You know, they've all got their own hair. They've all got their own features. But the thing that brought them together was, you know, they, these group of boys are all from the same period and they're all like street kids. And so it was like the break. I think it was really the breaking down of them and the, the little tattoos and things like that that actually brought them together in their separate gangs, you know, the yeah. sharks and the jets, if that makes sense. I hope it does. It we, really also did, does. we also did, you know, a few of them, like a few of the sharks, a few of the jets, you know, they had scars that we, you know, didn't necessarily need a storyline behind or a backstory. It's just the life they led. They're they're scruffy. They're constantly fighting and struggling. You know, just they, like you, like Kay said, they don't have much money. They just you know, they, it's a rough life. But uh, so, you know, some of the, it's just like little elements that we could add to break them down and just to add you know a little roughness to them. So there were there were a bunch of them who had a little subtle scars, and you know, you don't need to necessarily explain why they're there. They just it's just part of their being and who they are. Yeah. And with all of the work that you're both doing and, and everything that you're doing with, with the actors, you know, this is an incredibly physically demanding film for the cast in terms of a lot of the stunt work with, with a lot of the male cast, you know, the dance choreography. And, you know, so with that in mind, did that influence any of the choices that you made with hair or makeup in terms of just thinking about what it has to kind of sustain throughout on screen. Um, you know, okay, I'm going to do this particular look on an actor and they're going to be doing full on choreography for the next six hours and it still needs to look the same. And, and were there a lot more touch-ups on set because of that, because of the physical side of it with the actors as well than usual? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, I think for both of us, um, you know, I mean, every time, especially those large numbers, sorry, Judy, I just jumped in there. Um, but, you know, certainly like the dance at the gym, you know, West Side Story was shot through summer in New York. So first of all, when we were shooting outside, it was like 90 degrees, you know, and the, these kids who are amazingly fit and incredibly talented were dancing in that blistering heat in New York. And, you know, I mean, one day it was so hot. We, we actually had to go home by three o'clock in the afternoon. They said, we're not shooting anymore. That's the kind of heat we were in. And even when we were inside, like the dance in the gym, which was shot at the, uh, it, we were in an area, I think in Queens, like I can't really remember now, but anyway, we were, we were inside um, and it, the building was air conditioned, but as soon as we started shooting, the air conditioning needed to be shut off. So, I know that, you know, that was, they were, oh, of course, they'd be sweating even if it was a cold day because of the exertion, but up against the heat of what they were working in, um, you know, they, I mean, it's amazing they were able to keep any makeup on their face at all, but, you know, that they did and they, you know, the, the makeup girls just never stopped. And for my part of it, the way I got around it with particularly with the girls is they're nearly all in wigs and the reason because because you know they all had long straight hair as I said earlier for for this period of time that wasn't the fashionable look and 
even though they are young and they're street kids and they didn't have quite a lot of money, uh, it made more sense to me that that they would at least do their very best to keep up with fashion as best as they could. And in the 50s, short hair that was permed or curly was much more fashionable. And that was my choice to wig them so that they could at least that is much easier to maintain. And I, I didn't have to like in between. Of course, we had to do checks. But if, it, if they had all had long, straight hair, it would have been a nightmare. You know, it would have been like every, every time they did a take, we'd have all been rushing in to, to try and maintain it. Yeah. So that's my, my bit of it. <laughs> um, yeah, the heat. The heat was really something. It was like another character in our film. <laughs> um, uh, I, there, there was really nothing that I wanted to do to... Um, like to add more makeup or make more the makeup any different than what it was intended to be because I didn't want to compromise the look. So in the, that we, it was a lot of maintenance. It was a lot of like blotting and fans and um, reapplying. Uh, we did seal our tattoos and scars within an inch of their lives. Um, yeah, we actually had a snow day. I remember, Kay, do you remember we went home one night and we got all got emails that we weren't shooting the next day. And it was like, what? Because it was just too dangerous. It was during America. It was just too hot. So it it's like hot. basically we, we had a snow day in the summer. <laughs> and it's like, I haven't had a snow day since I was in grade school. It's amazing. Um, and and also, do you remember that during, again, during America, we had um, with a few of the cast, you know, they'd be dancing in this incredible heat. And they, with all of the protection, the sun protection they had, they'd still catch, they'd catch the sun, you know, they'd catch a, a slight suntan or something. So maintaining their skin tone was a challenge in itself. I, I, I really, I went to bat and got a production to set up tents for them so that they could have a break from the sun, you know, whenever there was a different camera setup happening but they would never go in them because <laughs> they all wanted to be together. And uh, that's right. Between the umbrellas and the constant sunscreen, we were all holstered, holstered with <laughs> unscreened fans, what we call sweat towels, um, umbrellas, and, uh, you know, offering them water. So we were doing much more than hair and makeup. <laughs> uh, and, you know, the few times I remember when we were at Dance of the Gym, the they were sweating profusely and then they actually had a small break and I look over and they're doing literally handstands. I'm like, dude. <laughs> and then I look and Bernardo is like lifting a boulder, doing curls. I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> Get in the but they'd never listen. They'd say, okay, thank you. But they'd never listen. So we just gave up and we just kept up with the sunscreen and the umbrellas. Yeah, trying to chase them around with an umbrella. I mean, that's a big thing that you do during filming anyway. You know, you try and keep your actors in the shade as much as possible for their own protection and, and also so they don't suddenly start getting a suntan. Mm -hmm. um, but in this, it was virtually impossible, you know, trying to, they, they're all so young and energetic and healthy and fit and talented that you like trying to rein them in was virtually impossible, you know. Impossible. And you know, speaking of working with the cast, I, I really wanted to talk about that side of your job because your job goes well beyond you know the work and, and the look and the styles that you're creating on screen. It's also about that collaboration with the actors. Um, and also when you're working on them in the morning at the beginning of a shoot day, creating a space dependent on what it is that they need from you. I think, Kay, when you did Joker, you know, there were details like both hair and makeup working at the same time to expedite the process, creating a really quiet space. Um, you know, so every actor comes into hair and makeup and needs something different, whether they want to be able to talk through something, be running lines for themselves, or if they just want to kind of sit there quietly. And so for working on this project, I was interested in, in how you kind of navigate when you first step into a production and you're meeting an entirely new cast and just very quickly kind of reading what it is that they need from you in those spaces and the rest of your team well this lot were together all the time you know like they i mean for, it's rare for us um you know judy and i have done several films together and usually we're in the same trailer but because of the size of this ensemble and cast we actually had separate hair and makeup trailers that they would all come in together. They, they, you know, it's like they live, breathe, work together. 
that that's the impression I got. They all knew each other so well. Mm. A lot of them had worked together before. I'm talking about the the ensemble largely. That um, I got the impression that they just spent so much time together. They they were always chatty, and you know they'd be. I don't know. They they just seemed to be talking about anything and everything when they were in the chair. That was the impression I got. You know, both the boys and the girls. Yeah, I mean, they, they had such a great long rehearsal period. Um, they really bonded. And I, I, I just know every single one of them are friends for life. But, you know, in, in terms of like the daily hair and makeup process, you know, they would just stumble in with their breakfast and sit down and do as they're told. And then they'd get up and go. <laughs> I mean, I think, I think we were all very much on the same page regarding the looks. Um, they were just a real joy to work with. They, I mean, anytime any any of them might have had a, an idea or a thought, you know, we would collaborate. And, and I think it, it was always like really pretty much spot on, like what we were all thinking. And, you know, I think I think everyone really came together in terms of the look that we were trying to achieve. So it was it was it was really wonderful and collaborative between myself and Kay in the costume department and, and Stephen and the actors. Yeah, I think that's true. They all got on, everybody, it did feel like absolutely everybody was on the same page and there wasn't, not one of them in the ensemble or the cast who weren't truly excited and happy to be there. You know, they made the job a pleasure. It, it yeah. was just lovely. That's wonderful to hear. And especially because the film is such a beautiful homage to the original and the way that it's filmed. Um, I was interested for both of you in terms of early camera tests, if you had much of an opportunity to do camera tests, what the things were that you wanted to kind of play around with and figure out or like what the details were of how Steven was going to shoot the entire film or camera setups that he was going to do, lens he was going to use, like those types of details that were really useful to you in terms of doing your job, if there were any. I mean, we, we did do a, a day of camera tests and, um, but I don't, I didn't remember anything in particular. I mean, apart from wanting, you know, Stephen was very clear about what he wanted, about it. He, he wanted it to be period correct. And, you know, he, he wanted all those characters, the, 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 the dancers that the ensemble and the actors brought, he, he wanted that. So, you know, there wasn't anything that to test in particular as far as, well, actually, I suppose like he wanted to see the different looks, you know, like what we were going to do to them when we turned them into whoever it was that they were playing. Um, and that was really what the camera test was about. But I don't remember anything in particular. Do you, Judy? Not really. I mean, other than what you mentioned um, in terms of Stephen's direction, um, I, I did have a few opportunities where I tested scars and tattoos on some of the of our cast and you know there's a big difference when you um uh, have someone sitting in a makeup room in a chair so i was like you know what i really want to i want to use these tattoos and i want to use these scars so let's try to sell it so i took them out around the corner from the brooklyn rehearsal space and you know i just had them up like be riff you know be tiger you know and so they would you know i gave them a cigarette to smoke <laughs> Uh, you know, they pretended and, and, you know, they just became those characters and they sold the look, they rolled up their sleeves. And, you know, that was, that was really fun to sort of start seeing them come to life. I love that. And, you know, in looking back at the incredible work that you've both done on this film, is there a particular aspect of the work that you've done that you're proudest of, whether it's an individual character look or just an overall aesthetic choice that you made or just a minute detail that you came up with for the film? I think honestly, one of the, and I know I mentioned it before, but I think the challenge, I haven't seen the film yet and neither is Judy. So it's hard. It's a little bit hard to say if there's one thing that you can look at and go, oh, I'm so glad that that worked out having not seen it yet. But I still go back to, I think it was, and I think I can speak for both of us when I say that the heat, like getting, getting the looks we got 
against the heat was was huge. I, I feel like that was quite an achievement. There isn't yeah. one particular look that I can go, you know, oh, that was a real challenge or that was particularly difficult. Um, but- dance at the gym was, I was so <laughs> happy with our whole team, everything that we did, the, the costumes, the pops of color, the way the hair moved, the way the dancers moved. It was just, I, I'm really, really proud of that. I mean, I, I, I just thought it looked really period and like just just really heightened and beautiful and the energy in the entire room. And, you know, we had a part in that. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That is true. And holding it together, because I think it was shot, was it five days? I can't remember now. It was shot over, <laughs> was it more? I can't remember. But it was shot over several days anyway, however long it was. And, you know, that that's a lot to maintain. So, and I, I think all of us, and like you say, the costumes were incredible. Paul Taswell did an amazing job. And, he did. you know, it, it's, as you say, bright, larger than life. It, it was, it was good. It was, it was a nice, but, nice thing you know, to be proud of. And the, the part of why I love dance in the gym so much is because these, they were, they were really dancing. So while it needed to look put together and, and and just like really complete the looks you know little things that would happen that I would love like you know <laughs> I'm gonna do this badly but hair would move and it would like flick in in someone's eyes and then they'd flick it back and it was just like so perfect and it just made me made it feel really real and like a flush in a cheeks and their cheeks would show up and you know and, but there was, and, and, you know, to give them credit, um, you know, the, the expressions on their face, their excitement, the smiles, the, you know, the, the, the rivalry between the two gangs, you know, it just made it really wonderful. It was, it was a great, it was a great thing to witness and to be, to see it and be part of it. I mean, I still don't know how they had that kind of energy. I mean, I do three jumping jacks and I have to sit on the sofa for an hour. <laughs> I mean, but they just didn't stop. You know, they, they danced from morning till night. Well, having had the privilege of seeing the film and seeing it on, on the big screen, the work that you've both done is really, really astounding. And I think everything, you know, everything just comes together so beautifully in this movie. So congratulations on everything with the film. And thank you so much, Judy and Kay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.